What's a short print? What does SP mean? What's a numbered card? What's a blaster box? These are a lot of questions that I commonly get on my channel and on Facebook. With today's modern era of cards, things have become more complicated, more complex than they once were in, say, the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s. 90s started getting a little more complicated with inserts and special cards. But now today we have autographs, we have relics, we have patches, we have variations, we have short prints, we have numbered cards, you name it, we've got it. <laughs> Pretty complex nowadays. And that can leave a lot of new collectors and old collectors kind of in the dust if they don't really understand what exactly they're looking at when they open a box of cards. Well today I am going to try and help you with that. For anyone who is new to collecting, or returning to collecting, or who has been collecting, but just doesn't understand all of today's jargon, hopefully this video will help you. Okay, so let's start out with retail and hobby packs and boxes. You have your standard retail packs. Now, retail and hobby are going to have different odds, generally, on stuff, but this is your basic retail pack, standard individual pack. This is what's called a rack pack or a hanger pack or a value pack. These are generally going to have different odds than uh, your standard packs. There's also hanger boxes or value boxes. Those are about 10 bucks and they are different from the blaster boxes. These are going to be typically 20 bucks. They're going to have anywhere from uh, 8 to 10 packs depending on the product. But this is a blaster box found at Meyer, Target, Walmart. Okay. So retail generally is going to have um, worse odds than hobby. And then you have hobby. Example of a standard hobby pack. Hobby edition. Then you have the jumbo packs. But not every product has jumbo packs. And then you have hobby boxes. Hobby edition. Example, this is 2016 Gypsy Queen, two autographs and two relics per box. Generally, um, you're guaranteed hits with hobby boxes, but you'll have to check the product and see if it does guarantee anything. Hobby boxes are going to be more expensive, anywhere from 35 on up to, say, 300 depending on the product you're getting. Uh, as for what product you should get, I don't know. I don't know what you like. It all depends on what you like. Um, the only advice I can give you on what you should buy is to do your research on different products and see what you feel you would like. Uh, as for retail or hobby, well, it depends. You know, you want to go cheaper, go with retail. Again, you're not always guaranteed anything. Uh, do you want a chance at bigger hits and better odds? And you have the money, go with hobby. What is a short print? A short print is a card that there is less of than a standard card. Example, this is a short print. Well, how do I know it's a short print? Well, I know it's a short print because uh, the checklist tells me it's a short print on Cardboard Connection. For example, in this set, 2014 Heritage, cards 426 through 500 are short printed. This is card 493. That's one way that I know it's a short print. Another way I know it's a short print is the code. See this code right here? 7123. Generally, in the last few years, those code numbers vary. If a card's a short print, that code will be different than the standard base card. So this is a short print. This is a variation. Two different pictures. Same year, 
same product. Well, how do I know it's a uh, variation? Well, cardboard connection checklist tells me it's a variation. It's the action variation. Also, the code numbers are different. One, two, three, one, two, six. That's another way. Again, you're going to have to check the checklists. Cardboard connection. They give a pretty nice comprehensive guide. That's how you're going to determine what's a short print, what's a variation. Okay. <clears throat> Next, this is another question I get quite often. What's a refractor? How do you know it's a refractor? Well, I'm going to show you a standard chrome card like this Miguel Cabrera, which is a numbered card. See how shiny that is? It's also a little bit thicker than a standard card. High gloss. That's a chrome card. It's also a numbered card out of 999. Okay. This is a refractor. See the difference? Pretty big difference. There's also color refractors. These, for example, these are purple refractors. See that? A couple more examples of refractors. Let's see how it looks, has that rainbow look to it? All the different colors. And the light hits it. That's a refractor. That's how you know it's a refractor. Regular chrome cards do not do that. Okay. So another thing you might encounter are foil cards. Rainbow foil. Now keep in mind, I showed you earlier, this is a chrome card. And these are refractors. Refractors are typically chrome cards. Okay, Very high gloss. Very smooth. These are foil cards. These are rainbow foil. This is a gold foil, and this is a standard hollow foil, rainbow foil. Okay? So, again, this is a chrome. This is just a standard rainbow foil or hollow foil, whatever you want to call it. Typically, it's rainbow foil. Gold foil. So I've shown you these. Rainbow foil. Purple refractor is a chrome. Chrome refractors. Chrome. There's also X-fractor. And that is the design. It is a refractor. Chrome card. And this is called the X-Fractor. See those squares in there? That's an X-Fractor. This is a prism refractor. You see that? Put them next to each other. See the difference? And a standard chrome. Actually, let me pick a little better one. There we go. Alright, so hopefully you can see the difference in those. Another one is uh, error cards. Uh, now, with a product like Topps Heritage, uh, they do intentional error cards. And again, that is a variation. Uh, or a short print. Again, a short print is a card in which there is less of than the standard base card or the standard version of that card. Now, there are errors that are unintentional. For example, this 2012 Triple Threads, Pablo Sandoval, is a white whale for triple threads 
White Whale is a printing plate patch autograph. It is a one of one. It says in 1999, Sandoval posted the third giant season. While Sandoval was not playing Major League Baseball in 1999, that is an error. And as far as I know, all the others are like that. This is an uncorrected error. This isn't necessarily going to give it any added value. Now, if there was a corrected version of this card, this one being the error may give it some value. Um, how do you know if there's a corrected? Um, that's a good question. Um, when you look at 80 stuff and you look through a Beckett, they'll tell you corrected or uncorrected. Uh, today, you know, errors tend to be flukes. Sometimes a card, say a tops card, could be missing the foil. Uh, now, an example of the foil on the logo. This is an actual foil card, but if you look at the tops logo, you see how it's silver? Sometimes in the stamping process, some cards won't get that foil right there for the Topps logo, so it'll just be an imprint. Now, I've personally pulled cards like that. Um, that's an error. There are versions uh, without the foil and versions with the foil. It's not an intentional thing, typically. It's unintentional. So that is an example of one that can carry a premium. If foil is missing on the Topps logo. And again, this is just a rainbow foil card, just for an example. I hope this video helped you guys. I uh, hope you have a better understanding if you didn't before. Uh, again, it's all about studying each product yourself, checking out Cardboard Connection and going through the checklists and the visual guides that they offer that people put together. But yeah, I hope this video helped. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.